Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm your host, Derek Whitehead. Joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. We just wanted to take a second and let you know that today's episode of Savage Saturday is sponsored by GhostBed. GhostBed's been a loyal sponsor of the Drinking Bros podcast for over four years. Everybody loves GhostBed. I love GhostBed. I'm the proud owner of two ghost bed mattresses and two pillows and right now if you buy a mattress from ghost bed you get two free pillows and if you go to ghostbed.com slash drinking bros you can save 25 percent. that's ghostbed.com slash drinking bros grab yourself a mattress two free pillows get some good sleep enjoy the show Fuck, that hurts so bad. Because you got them little oh my uh, God. sensitive oh, hands now. Oh, I did my I did my clap, uh-huh. but um, you know I uh, had my competition this past Saturday. Yep. Um, came at a price. Came at a price. Put some skin down. Came at a price. You know. So actually, um, well, well let, let, let's let's be courteous to our listeners. Hi, welcome back to Savage Saturdays. This is episode thirty. Yep. I'm your host, Derek Whita. Owen's in the room, and we've got Stacy, Savage Stacy, Savage Stacy. Say hi, Stacy. Say hi. Uh, hi, Stacy. Hi. 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 Hey, Chad did that on the he show. He did. I, that's yeah. the some people can't help themselves it's with that like one. A you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dad joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so we're all here. I think. Uh. T- I think today we're just gonna spend some time, and we're gonna recap uh the competition. I I, I really liked uh. I really liked how episode 29 went and I actually listened to it while yeah. I was up in Utah there and just kind of the interview. Was and that ours? No, we were 28. Oh, oh I was yeah. like, this was with AJ. Right. No. But you did like ours though, right? I did. Yeah. See? And I said, I said I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I liked, I, I really, I really enjoyed listening to Owen hyperventilate. <laughs> <laughs> for yeah. A that bit first there. 30 seconds was like, what? Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, so, uh, but what, so what's the significance of what you just said? I know it was before the show, before we started recording, but I can't move on. You said, Oh, I was just reading the news. Uh, an Israeli airliner completed its first direct flight from obviously Israel to the UAE. Why is that significant? Because the UAE is an Arab nation, United Arab Emirates. And they don't like Israel. Oh yeah. They really, they are not close at all. However, uh, they, I think it was two weeks ago now. I think they had the peace yeah, agreement. Peace, peace agreement about oh, two really? weeks ago. Yeah. 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 So they're going to be uh, historic. It's good maybe for not trade. friends, but yeah, exactly. It's good for like the world yeah. really to show that people that are different can get along. Wow. No, no, that Imagine doesn't, that. no, that doesn't, uh, coincide Entire with the beliefs that have been instilled upon me this year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's a happy story to start yeah. out with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So, oh, uh, and on top of that too, uh, Israeli jets landed in Germany for the first time, like a couple weeks ago too. Mm. They like, had never, they had never flown to Germany. Supposedly no. Really? Yeah. So I didn't know that. That one's also understandable. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but so before we get into um, recap in the competition, I I got a slapper, I got a slapper, and we've ser- we've shared similar music like this before. Yeah. But I, I I don't I don't think I've shared this band yet or nope. this group. You have not. Um, and I listen to them all the time for years. I love it. It's a lot like Wardrunner type shit, you know. But this band is called High Long, and it's H E I L U N G. And specifically, the song I'm going to share is called Norupo. Okay. N-O-R-U-P-O. Sounds just, Japanese. But I, well, I, it does, I like really a Japanese don't, whiskey. I don't know what it is because they sound they have like high long, high long, yeah. But then, but then they they do a haka. <laughs> so I have no idea um, what. Na- oh, you got your computer out, right? I do because I was actually if, multitasking. I'm doing. If work only we at the had a time. device where <laughs> we could look yeah. up stuff on right. the fly. Yeah. 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 But um no I, I listen to these guys it's one of those those chill bands with like that cool war drum beat yeah no I um, dig that pumps you up yep. keeps your heart rate low and makes you feel aggressive and I was actually like you know we'll talk about it but before the event I was starting to get really nervous so I had to start listening to my like meditation calm down type music I tried to catch a I tried to get a picture of your nervous face and I and you immediately switched to not nervous face oh, I don't really? know that I've ever seen I Derek was impressed cuz I was I saw you and I went to grab my camera and you're like haha trying to catch me with my pregame <laughs> <Yeah>. face yeah. <laughs> 
Well, it, it was it was <laughs> weird. Everything was weird. Um. So uh, they were founded in 2014 by vocalist Kai Yu Faust, who's a German tattoo artist who specializes German. in Old Norse tattoos. I wondered if they were German. Well, it says Denmark, Norway, and Germany. Yeah. yeah. But for the, You're so into that whole, like, Scandinavian, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that war drum shit, yep. you know? And I have no idea what they're saying, but it doesn't matter. I like but it. But they also yeah. have, like, a female vocalist, and, and, and her shit's really good. Sometimes Wardrena yeah. pairs with female vocalists, mm -hmm. and it sounds yeah. super cool. yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's our slapper for today. I'm a little bit mellow. I think I'm, it's, uh, it's Monday. Yeah. You know, this, this episode will come out Friday, Saturday, but it's two Monday. days after the competition. Two days, so yeah. And I'm not, uh, I'm not tired from the competition. Um, you know, it was just one event. It was nine minutes of working out, but it was just like, you know, August has been so, I don't know a different word to say besides stressful. It's not like a bad stress. <laughs> it's just, you really look forward to something and there's oh, yeah. a lot of, it's like, it's a lot of yeah, anticipation, anticipation, you know, endorphins. and now it's done. And yeah. so now I'm just like, Hey, it's just kind of like, that'll be a few days, taking a few days to relax yeah. and not care and start figuring out what, you know, what I need to get done and stuff like that. But it's like when you have a, um, like a job interview that you've been really yeah. anxious for or, or looking forward to. And then when you get it or, or after you've passed that, that interview, you kind of have that like three days or four days mm -hmm. of, of decompression. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, you know, like um, doing competitions, like some competitions that are like three events in a day or a three day. So like I'm those doing, I'm doing like, HOA yeah. at the end of the month and, and I tank after those competitions and oh. that's like a real physical adrenal tank. That's, yep. that's yeah. the weird thing. Like my body may not be as sore, but my, my, my adrenals are just, yeah. Cash. You know, yeah. The chemicals are done. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> There's just, um, that's one of the, so I usually I take like a week to recover physically, um, from stuff, but I, you know, this competition was just, uh, nine minutes of work and I really, um, um, the training we did up to it was a lot harder than the competition itself. So, yeah. So where do you want to start? Should we just, should we just talk? Should we just, should I mean, we start at the event and then work yeah, back if we want? Yeah. Cause you're saying nine minutes of work, which sounds like Oh, that's easy. I can do that's nine easy. minutes of yeah. work. But when you look at the actual work that was done, yeah, uh, yeah, that's hard work. Especially like I really liked how Brooklyn was commentating during the whole thing because she has a different perspective as an athlete. So she was going through it, saying like, "Oh, this is really taxing your triceps," and then you're rolling into something that taxes your X Y Z, and then your grip strength and all of that, which people don't. If if you're not doing this yeah. sport you don't actually realize yeah so uh, yeah so for uh um, our listeners you can watch the whole event it's on my facebook page facebook.com slash derek whita the whole one is on your or my 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 event your event you is watch on your the, facebook. the entire the entire the entire night um you know we had aj here yep. last week yep um competitive fitness championship is their facebook page um so the event was the so so the competition i did it was one-on-one -on -one, one event the above knee championship title title it was the title fight yeah title and fight. if you're watching the, the title video, defense this is my it belt was. this is this is yes. my belt well it wasn't however, it wasn't because it's a new business yes. so it was up for grabs oh okay, i was okay, the rush yeah. club champion but now i'm the cfc champion you got know? it um so he holds two belts he had two titles mm -hmm. yeah well maybe oh <clears throat> yeah maybe, well he maybe does i'll have tell two you belts. something that jake and i have been talking about the last day um okay <laughs> <laughs> There's always something coming out around the corner. Like legit, I've told all my family and close friends, like I'm just waiting for this competition to be over. But then so I, that you can find I, out what's next. I follow <laughs> that up quickly with because I know something else is around the corner. It's well, just when I just, I'm in a training just, cycle again. Yeah, yeah. I just no. I mean, know like I, I know yeah. he has a team comp at the end of September. But that's for fun. But that's yeah. quote unquote for fun, which is going to quickly turn into C. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm not stupid. We've been married for three years now, and I know more than you think I know. Yeah. Derek she knows Wida, how you work, Derek. Yeah, Derek Whita is not a mysterious <laughs> yeah. person. Hey. Um, Which is what Owen and I talked about. That's right. About. Yeah. Um, we're, far, we're just yeah. a couple farmers over here. Yeah. yeah. I enjoy farming. Yeah. From time to time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so the event, the event I did, it was in a nine minute time cap. So you have nine minutes to get as far as you can or complete the workout, uh, nine minute time cap. It has a buy-in and cash out, which means, um, you do something before and after the workout. So the buy-in cash out is 10 hundred pound sandbags over shoulder. 
So the workout starts 10 sandbag over shoulder, 100 pounds, and then it goes 975 of 30 inch burpee box jump overs, toe to bar, bar muscle ups, and then cleans at 135. And then you finish with 10 more 100 pound sandbags um, over shoulder. And that's in uh, a nine minute time cap there. Right. And um, so I actually, you know, it was, it was years ago. I had, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't create this workout. Right. But I helped create the workout or, you know, I, I actually had Jake um, draw up like three to five workouts. Who's Jake? I didn't say that name. I had a friend draw up three to five workouts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, it presented to AJ. Because the thing is, is um, what I what I what I don't like about adaptive division workouts is they're not um, sometimes they are too easy. OK, you know, like they're like, oh, they're 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 crippled. Let's make the one legged man yeah. only jump to an 18 inch box. But that's so not impressive. That's why I'm asking, like, too easy for who? Or like in what the aspect? elite elite or it's not okay. impressive to me or, or maybe it's or, not, I mean, so there's a difference between competitions and then regular training. Right. So yeah. like, you know, certain competitions are not going to do certain movements or like string together different things because it's not really like entertaining per se. Yeah. So is so that what you so mean also? Yeah, so so CFC it's 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 competition, mm-hmm. but it's also entertainment. Right. And right. So so is like, you know what? Like if you're if you're an above knee amputee, getting out of the bed and going to the gym, that that's that's good. You know, like it's hard. But if you're an above knee amputee doing burpee box jump overs at thirty inches, yep. that's just like stop a viewer in their tracks right. and be like, What How's am I that? seeing? What right. am I seeing? Yeah. You know, and then toe to bar, bar muscle ups there. There's nothing super amazing about that. It's just like, it's, it's a tough, well, I, mean, I don't know tough, about that, yeah. well, I can't well, them. but then, but then uh. like the 135 <laughs> cleans in the workout, that's a, that's a legit weight. And the way we do it is like muscle clean, you know, and just that hundred pound sandbag, the way we, um, you know, it's, it's not much, uh, leg drive. It's so it's a really, it's a, it's funny cause the workout is so short and it's such few reps, but there's something about that combo that just gets you, you yeah. know, toe to bar right into bar muscle ups, right into the that cleans, especially right yeah. into, yeah. you know, so, so it's funny cause, um, so, uh, you know, I don't want to give too much of my, well, I don't care. So, <laughs> um, my strategy, my strategy for the workout was, um, you know, to go at a comfortable pace on the sandbag over shoulder. And I felt super, so it was, uh, yep. we, were, we were shooting for five second reps. Okay. So that would, that would mean I would, I would have 50 seconds to finish those first 10 reps. Right. And I think I was going pretty good and in control, but I watched the video and I think I finished in like 34 seconds or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's pretty That's quick. really I, yeah, fast. I had but to I keep got, telling you to slow down. Yeah. Yeah. But at like seven or eight, I heard AJ announce that we were rep for rep. Neck and, and that, neck. Yep. That made me, that made me angry. Um, I was like, no, nah, I can't do this neck and neck shit. Cause I was already like really nervous and scared. Right. Um, uh, in the first movement he's already like, you know, oh my gosh. Well, but the thing is too, is with these, these movements and these competitions, anything can happen at any point. That's why I also want to point out like the strategy. So Derek said he had a strategy going into this. Like I didn't really necessarily realize that, you know, for these kinds of competitions or even training per se. So I've learned that through my training too. Like, yep. hey, what is your goal here? What is your strategy? And that really makes a difference between someone who just casually does fitness and someone who I think is a competitor. Yeah. So that's that's well, like, interesting. I posted a picture on Instagram this morning and I look like I'm super serious. Mm-hmm. I was standing there, but what I'm really doing <laughs> is math in my head. I was counting <laughs> to 10. So the way the sandbag was... It was off to the side of the box a little bit. Yeah. But it depending on which way I faced, if I threw it over my shoulder, it would be in my burpee lane. And so I would have to, you know, do that 10 sandbag, oh. then move the sandbag yeah. to start my burpee. So I was counting which way to face to start yeah. so that I would throw it out of my lane. Right. But that's <laughs> another thing is everything counts. Totally. Every yeah. step for Derek uh, or anyone yeah. like uh, a baloney above knee whatever or even it doesn't even matter if you have two legs every step counts where you put your things the strategy behind all of that is what makes but a fitness person a, an elite yeah person. but that's a that's a high level to achieve that kind that's of that's what i'm saying thought and focus and clarity i remember i, I didn't always have that you know <laughs> i would used to just like 
run through something, you know, but when, you know, you really start breaking things down. Yeah. And um, how do you shave off one movement? How do yeah. you gain yeah. back three seconds? Right. How do you, yeah. how do you speed it up just yeah. a little bit? So that way all those little bits add up yeah. to, to like a 30 second lead yeah. or, or whatever. So, so like I did those, uh, I did the D ball and um, I actually came off, I think about a rep and a half ahead of him. Mm hmm. Yep. Um, and then I was going to, uh, our plan was to do five second reps for the nine burpee box jump overs, but I was a little bit, um, uncomfortable with how close he was to me. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I stepped on the gas for a little, I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to dust him on these burpee box jump overs and I'll take a look at where he's at, you know? Um, and I cruised through those, yeah. those first ones. And I'll tell, I'll tell you, um, when we did this workout in 2017, I wasn't, uh, I really, um, I wasn't happy with how I looked when I did the burpees. I was really kind of, I looked like my body felt heavy and I do, I wasn't like, I wasn't attacking the burpees. Oh, like okay. Burpees, burpees are tough, you know, and, then and I wasn't attacking, right. I wasn't <laughs> attacking the burpees. So if you look on those first nine, my rule was if my chest hits the ground, I'm popping up. Right. And if I need to catch my breath or stump something, I'll catch my breath after the pop-up, you right. know, but I'm not going to inchworm my first set of burpees. So I hit the gas there. Um, and then I just hopped over to the, uh, the bar to start my toe to bar. And I looked over and, um, I created a nice little gap there, hmm. you know, and, uh, w one of the hardest things in my competition is our plan was, you know, in training for the night. So it goes toe to bar right into bar muscle ups. And in training, I did nine and nine without coming down. And that's what we were training for in okay. case we had to do that. Right. You know? And how many but was it for this? Nine, nine and nine. It was nine. And yeah. Nine. Okay. So mm -hmm. this round is nine and nine. Um, and uh, my coach told me to come down, do nine toe to bar and then come down. And I said, what if we're neck and neck? He's like, if you're neck and neck, go for it. But if you're two reps ahead, come down. Yeah. And I came down. I didn't know if mm. I was going to, cause like when you get, when you get nervous, when you want to right. attack and yeah. go, um, but that workout, you know, the round of nine is just there to screw up your round of seven. Yep. <laughs> you know? Um, just to heat you yeah. up a little bit before so, you got to uh, go. Yeah. But so. that's when you have to trust your process. Yeah. But trust that's a lot of trust. Training. For sure. It's a lot of, because, it's a lot of trust. Because, you know, going back to the five second reps, that's kind of a lot of time for Derek. And it's kind of a lot of pause, slow time. Mm -hmm. But you have to trust the process and know that you've been training for this and that it, that's a good time for you, blah, blah, blah. Cause, cause I don't know how he checks in on the other athlete. I don't, I don't get it when I'm, when I'm doing something, I'm literally only focused on what you got I'm blinders doing. On? Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. focus on what, what someone else is that's doing. A, yeah, so. so that's a, I was, I was good. Well, so that's, here's the, here's how it went. Yeah. So I did the Tota bar and it was then when I was done with the Tota bar and, and Marcus was still on his burpee box jump overs. I was like, all right, Got got a little room we're to play good. with. Yeah, yeah. We're good yeah. now. And if you, you come know. out too hot, I mean, you can tank yeah. fast. Oh, That's yeah. what I was worried it's like about. Like hitting a wall. Yeah. yeah. But so so the but the thing is with these CFC workouts is you have to your your comfortable pace has to be a really fast pace because right. it is it is you 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 uh, you toe the line with the red line and whoever mm -hmm. can hold that mm -hmm. the longest you know. So anyways, I um you know I did those toe to bar. I came down came down for 10 seconds, went right at the 10 second mark. Those were some of the best muscle ups I've ever done. Those were fast. Yep. Those were fast. Popped right up. Yeah. Those were really fast. His skin <laughs> but I just popped like, right off yeah, too. Really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we had an arrangement. Marcus was going to wear, um, his hand grips and everybody, uh, they were supposed to tape my pull up bar. Right. I didn't want to wear hand grips and, and Marcus okayed that and AJ okayed that. And when I walked out and I saw no tape on the bar, I was like, Man, son of a bitch. Like, God I'm going to fucking it. tear here. Yep. I was like, and, and That's I told part of the competition. I told myself, I was like, Derek, you're going to tear and you're going to fucking shut the fuck up about it. Cause it really doesn't matter. Cause it was like, that was, that was my year. Yeah. yeah that after was, that, that was my what year. do you need your yeah. hands for? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. You know? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do some stuff. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Work around the house, you know, <laughs> the dishes. <laughs> the dishes. Uh, I did the mm -hmm. dishes mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Especially when I finished, as soon as I finished those first uh, nine muscle ups, I knew that we, um, that that we were gonna win. Cause but um, this is why I can't compete or like do any sort of 
anything event because I have all these expectations. And if something happens the day of, I'm just, it's shot for me. Mm, but well, Derek just rolls with it because you have to. Mm-hmm. But it was, just bothers me to my core. And I'm like, forget it. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going so, home. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I, I had such a panic moment. Yeah. When I was waiting outside. So before our walkout, we just sit there by ourselves. Yep. And we were supposed to start. I think we were supposed to walk out at like 737 was the tentative time. And I think we walked out at about seven o'clock. And so oh, okay. everything was like Moving the, the along. warm up was super rushed. And I and I showed up late. You know, I didn't I showed up at um, my own time because I didn't want to just sit around there for too long. And my um, my self-talk and mental game had been good up until that day saturday i just started like panicking but it's yeah. but it, that that's fine and it, and it and it actually made me think about airborne school okay how what scared part? i was to jump out of the plane that first time yeah i wasn't a tough person you know right um like growing up i was afraid of roller coasters and things like that and you're literally like fucking nervous and shaken to I the hate core roller coasters. and i was outside <laughs> and i was sitting i was sitting down and aj was doing my introduction and in my and I was seriously freaking out. I felt empty, dude. I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. What the fuck? I think I'm gonna puke and shit right now. <laughs> I can't do this. And I looked at the woman who was gonna tell me when to go in, and I looked at her and I said, I can do this, right? You know. And she looked at me and she said, You can do this. She's like, I can't do this, but you can do this, <laughs> right? And it wasn't until so I walked. I had my walk out. Those flames pumped me up. Yep. The flames and the music pumped me up, but I got out there and I just, I still felt empty. I didn't feel like muscular, ready to go. I, I was just, I just felt super empty. Um, so I, uh, when, you know, but you got to go when that yep. fucking, when that, yeah. when that light goes green, when you got to green light goes you on jump out the door. Time's you know? up. Let's do this. It's time to jump out of the fucking door. <laughs> so I just started chucking that sandbag, staying calm. Yep. And when, when he told me, or actually, so right before that, um, I told myself, I was like, hey, man, it doesn't matter. That you're like, your feelings don't matter. Like, being scared doesn't matter. Like, you can move. You have. I, I trained so much. Like, it's it's physically, I'm fucking ready for this. Right. So all I got to do is just, like, shut my brain off and just move. Because there's nothing here that I can't do. And there's nothing here that I can't do really well. And I had that. And that's what um, my coach told me beforehand. He's like, dude, he's like... He's like, trust me when I say that it is highly unlikely that somebody has trained as hard as you had. He's like, as the person who wrote your program, it is highly unlikely that somebody else prepared this well. Right. So he, I read one of the texts from his coach before he went on that day and it said, these are the only people that can beat you today. And it was a list of people. And the only one that was listed was you, meaning Derek. So you are the only person that can beat you today. And it's so true. So, but you know, and so I actually, so, and so I did a, um, or actually somebody shot me a message and they're like, Hey man, I have a competition in three weeks. I'm really scared, but watching you compete motivated me. And I was like, I'll tell you a funny story. I was scared as fuck. (laughs) I don't know what the fuck happened. I just, I was, you know, I, I think I was probably like visibly. You were visibly nervous. You were visibly nervous. Yeah. 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 He, even leading up to it, he was listening to Rocky and all those things. And yeah. so uh, he said to me, I can't get my heart rate down. And I, I remind him of a couple things. First, we are at elevation for us, at least. It was right. at 3,000 feet, I think. So, of course, maybe it's a little lack of oxygen. Your body's getting adjusted. And another thing we couldn't control was how hot and humid it was. Yeah, it was in there. bad that day. It was yeah. so, so hot that was and humid. Concerning. So, like, I think. You know, it, it, it probably would have happened anyways, but, you know, definitely going through COVID at the beginning of the month and missing, like my training has been, I've been doing as best as I can, but that's not my best. Right. And so like those, yeah. you know, factors and like did the dealing things. with the dizziness and I haven't, yeah. it's been hard for me to regulate my breathing um, and the dizziness in, in workouts, you know, but uh, yeah. remember that workout I did? And we actually made a video of it, the ski erg and the sandbag and the, Oh yeah. I went hard on that one. Yeah, you like did. I went, so that was kind of like, I proved to myself that I can be dizzy. I cannot have my breath with right. like this sickness, like the lingering illness and still do well. So yeah, I was just, I was just, um, yeah, super, super hardcore 
moments of fear and doubt. But you are going to be nervous. And yeah. that was another thing I reminded him of. Like the fact that you are nervous means that you care a lot about this. It's a normal human emotion. Yeah. It's good and that then, you feel nervous. Yeah. And so for the people who watched, or you like the, everybody who watched was like, wow, Derek, I like, or people, people told me they're like, I've never seen a side of you like that. Like you were laser focused, prepared, you crushed that. And so it kind of just goes to show like, or like, you know, we say, you can't control the voices that enter your head, your brain, right. and, but you, you can control how you respond to that, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? And I was just, um, so it's like, I'm not upset. I would like, I don't know if it's realistic to remove that pre-competition. The nervousness of yeah, pre-competition? I don't, don't think so. Yeah. I think you so need it. Just, it's I just really learning do. to it, deal it, with it. It amps you and, up. Yeah. It gets the adrenaline going and it's, it makes yeah. you sort, it's that fight or flight response and it, totally. it lets yeah. you go. Well, and, and if then, you talk to people who've been performing like in like stand up comedy or, or anything for years and years, like they still get that going in and yeah. they're legends and, and they're that, like, I think it's a good thing. It's totally a good so thing. It's, it's, means yeah, it it's, means something to you. means you're alive. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like, I'm actually, you know, it's like, um, I've, proven to myself that i can be that fucking afraid and still go out there and, and get shit done you that's know? the like juice just, man that's the like, best so feeling. like so like next next time i'm competing when i feel that way i'll be like oh i can still do this but had i have walked away oh yeah thought about walking away yeah. no. had, I, had, had, had like if you quit then next time you try, it's even you harder. Remember that you're a quitter. Yeah, you your remember brain you're a loser. remembers yeah. those things. We've you talked wire about your that. Brain. Yeah, yeah so really. really. You know, so it's like, you know, okay, this competition is over. What did I accomplish? I got better for next time. Yep. Because the next one's going to be harder. You know, and then the next one's going to be harder. Everything, everybody always gets better. Everything always gets more difficult. And this competition was only training for the next one. That's something I really um, learned here. You know, so. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe how scared it was. It's just, it was funny, you know. Um, but uh, uh, back to the workout, I hit, um, I had a couple goals. I had a couple goals for the workout. You know, like I said, like within the first three minutes, I knew I was going to win. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, I just sort of casually moved through the rest of the workout. I had a little fun. I didn't, I didn't push it. I, didn't, I think I that's didn't, dangerous. Saying, I didn't go full throttle. Saying that truthfully, like in the first three minutes, you knew you were going to win. What well, do you, how do you mean? Cause what I was finished with my bar muscle ups before he even started his and it takes, so that's like a good 45 second lead at, at minimum. If, if somebody does the nine muscle ups, on, that's a 45 second lead to waste. Yep. And that's, that's just uh, in a, in a one, in a one-on-one -on -one event, one workout, nine minutes. If you get 30 seconds behind, the other person has to, or I'm too good yeah. to give up that lead. I get you know? that. And I there was really the do. same thing the other way around. If Marcus got a 30, 30 to 45 second lead on me, I couldn't close that distance if he yeah. was good enough to keep moving. But I think you know? that's what makes these style workouts kind of different than like football or something. Like you can see the score in football. I mean, if it's a run up, you're not going to, mm -hmm. whatever. But anything can happen like in CrossFit style workouts or like MMA or whatever. Like you just never yeah. know. So I yeah, would, true. I'm uncomfortable like, saying, Oh, I knew he was going to win three minutes in, but I mean, that's not something to take yeah. it away from you. It's just, sure. it's interesting. Anything can happen. Like those tears could have tore you apart and yeah. maybe you, I still did all my get muscle up on ups. The, I, still, I mean, I'm and just I went, saying, I went yeah. seven and seven on broke and I had a little fun there. The cleans that, that hurt. Yeah. So I think my, I think my tears popped and, the round of seven. I'm I, not sure. I think it was seven. And yeah. I think it was seven where you didn't come off the bar. Yeah. And I was upset because I was like, oh man, like he can afford to come off the bar. The grip is crazy. So again, like it's seven toe to bar and then he went straight into seven muscle ups. And yep. then that is, that's nuts. And that's why I think like Brooklyn did a great job commentating because it's different. It, like you see something, but you don't know how it taxes your muscles unless you're hearing it from someone or doing it. I've never personally done a muscle up, so I don't know, but that's a lot of work for, yeah. to go from that hanging seven toes to bar into seven muscle ups after the cleans and muscle ups. Yeah. So that was, that was my one little spurt, but for the rest of it. And so it's like, um, I didn't, I didn't end up finishing the workout. I, yeah. I had, how far did you I go? Had, I had six sandbags left. Oh, okay. Um, but you yeah. got to sandbags, which right. was, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. The, so, the, so, so, yeah. I, so here's, so in 2017, I did this against Marcus and I've, and I got two or three muscle ups in the round of five. 
Okay. So I still had all the cleans and the sandbags left, and I was fucking tanked. Yep. Like you I were was heavier tanked. then, weren't you? I was. I was barely heavier in a Maybe weird way. Maybe it just looked like it because you had yeah. the beard and the long yeah. hair. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I was like, you could see I was like purple in the face. Oh, yeah. And I was, you know, after the workout, I laid down on the ground. I was sitting down and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so one of my goals for this workout was no matter what, when it's over, do not lay down on the floor. That's a, that's that's one of my new CrossFit rules. Well, I, yeah. I thought one I of your goals was to also not sit, right? Well, I, I sat on the box just to right, casually, right. you know, okay. but, but like standing, you know, like, yeah. but I sat upright and stuff. Right. I didn't sit down on the floor. They had those boxes there. That wasn't planned. I was like, yeah, right. I'm going to, but I'm when, take, you know, yeah. when you're standing on one leg, right. that's yes. different than standing on two. Yeah. Okay. It's not a rest stand. So you don't rest on one leg. Can we talk about <laughs> that for a second? So the buy in the cash out, the 10, uh, 100 pounds sandbag over shoulder. So again, strategy, Derek's strategy was to always lift it over his right shoulder because there was no rule on which one that you needed to do. Uh, excuse me. You didn't have to alternate. Right, right. They didn't wait. It was your right shoulder, right? From my right shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Which is the leg that he's missing. So go, go through. Yeah, like I don't that. know why when I go over my left shoulder, it just feels weird. And I think it makes sense to me that if I overload my already heavy side, mm -hmm. I just tip over a little bit, you know? Yeah. And so it just, I don't know. I don't know the mechanics of why yeah. it just feels a lot smoother and more natural. But the same thing is true when I do, um, when I do like single arm dumbbell press, when I'm getting like seventies to a hundred and they're heavy, it's easy for me to do my right side, my left side is really fucking hard. And I, I don't know exactly that why. But so it's because of like the, the, the so fake legs bearing. absorbing some of the... Yeah, or or it makes me stand up, right? Or just overloading. Yeah. It's like overloading. This side of my body is already 30 pounds heavier yes. right. than this side. So right. like if I do a 100 pound dumbbell snatch, I can yeah. do it a lot smoother on my right side. Yep. But my left side like tips me over. If he's standing so up straight like, and doesn't have a shirt on, you can see he's leaning to the left because that's where he's really compensating. He's holding his body to the left because that he has the left leg, right. the left human leg. And he has like a strong glutes on that side, strong hams, strong quads. Well, everything's coming from that side. Everything's yeah. yep. coming from that side, which is interesting. That's his strong side, but he chose to go right shoulder for the the sandbag over shoulder um again yeah just super interesting how you're like running through all of that he has hardly any glutes hardly any quads uh hamstring anything on the right side so it's just it's an interesting i think yeah. and again something people don't and necessarily you think you about you couldn't tell by watching me that it was more difficult to go over my left side and that right. doesn't take me any longer it just feels it takes more energy Right. But that's again the difference. And you're spending little more little on those movements. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So I was like, I'm going right side. These are just the <laughs> little things that like make you just, you know, dial it in a little bit more. How, what, what small things can I do to get that much further ahead? Yeah. It's funny. It makes me think we, we had a mortar team and I had a guy who was really, really slow and I just took him out there and we just set the gun up and tore it down and set it up and tore it down yeah. and set it. And I, and I would just sat there and I'd watch him. And I'd be like, okay, try putting your hand here. And then we try and shave off like one hand movement of him in place in the, the bipod on the, on the cannon or, or something like that. And just every tiny little, okay, how can we, how can we remove one thing from process improvement? From, yeah, you can totally. do it in anything. Yeah. My mom worked that at one of the large department stores, like at the head headquarters there is like, how can it quality? I think it's quality. Yeah, improvement. But you have how to do really, you, you have to really get good at something yes. to start totally picking it hundred like percent. These, these little, the these little changes, these little secrets we're sharing. Yep. It's like you, it's, this is, this is like level 10. You know how to do you it. Know? You're good so, at yeah. it. Yeah. But how do know. we get yeah. a little bit faster? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, and it's like, which way to face? Yeah. Like which way? Yeah. All these little thoughts, you know? So I was like, um, yeah. So, you know, um, uh, uh, yeah, like where should you your that. leg be? Yeah. I, I like so stuff like you, that. Do you see me I just do too. process it improvement? It is. It, can, it applies anywhere in yeah. life. Yep. So like, in, can I move it this much closer or set it right here yeah. so that it's easier access? Like, what what can I do to Turn make it eight this steps much? into five? Yeah. Exactly. So yep. I was I was so the cleans were one thirty five, and typically if I'm training, I would get my feet nice and square and maintain yep. a nice body position. But um, you know, for training for this on my 135 sometimes i would walk up get my feet as roughly good as i can and just lift it awkwardly you know 
and and get used to that because it takes to like setting up your feet yeah like you guys setting up your feet you can control your foot i right. can't i control my foot from it's on a stick and i control it with my butt right and so i it takes it takes it takes a long time there. to get it in the right spot you <laughs> yeah. know I was, so. I was remembering watching you on the on the the over the shoulder ball throws and you had a um and this just popped into my head you had a uh, a good rhythm to your step out of it and your pivot to get in place for the next one. Yeah. And I was like, oh, damn, that looks fucking smooth. Yeah. So another thing Did is have he was on... throwing too far. <laughs> yeah. oh. He was throwing the sandbag <laughs> too far in training. So he was actually using too much force. And so for the he, throw. Yeah, he needs to get used to literally, like, just get it right here at your caps, like your shoulder, yep. and then pull, roll it. Just yeah. roll it over. And he was using too much force, too much muscle. Like, save that. You right. know, you have a bunch left. This was your, just your buy-in. Yeah. Right. So it was actually, remember, or, oh, after after we did the, so my burpee box jumps are like that too. Yep. I do the same down and up, and I know how many times my feet, I know how many times I hop, yep. and my breathing is in rhythm with that yeah. too. But actually now, I don't, um, um, on a couple of the burpees, because of some work I did last Monday, I, I cut those hops down. Oh, okay. And it changed my breathing a little bit, but like now, so yeah. like, but it, that getting better, you know, right. like now, now four second burpees are as easy for me as five second burpee right. box jumps. And now you can start you know? to adjust your breathing yeah. off of the yes. new rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually started, I was actually, um, I did seven burpee box jump overs in 15 seconds by eliminating the hop. So, okay. so for someone like, so it's like jumping on one leg is hard because you have to, you have to find generate the uh, balance between balance and power yeah because okay. when you pop up maybe your body position is leaning one way right. and, and you have to when you're trying to generate power if you don't have balance first that's really hard and right. it takes yeah. a lot to get you up have stabilization with two legs yeah it takes a lot to get up to that 30 inch uh, burpee box jump over but i challenged chad to a race mm -hmm. um, and i told him i was like hey man i'm pretty quick i get these done in about 20 seconds and he was like, he was like, all right. So he did his in 14 seconds. It, okay. it just, it was like 14.9 seconds, you know? But so he doesn't hop. Is that hop. to a 30 inch box? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't hop. He's just like, you know, he, you know, burpee, mm -hmm. feet come up. He jumps from there. Right. Yep. Goes down, burpee. Feet come up, jumps from there, and I yep. was like, Generate "Man, a jump with one." Yeah. So that's foot where and one that's calf. where you get that six that's seconds. Where he, yeah, yeah, well, like the point, the point six seconds point per six. rep. And yep. I was like, and I told him, I was like, I don't know if I can do that because of how difficult it is. Um, but I tried it and I did it, and that's it. Took so like we were. I was really impressed by hitting three second reps on the burpee box jump overs. Uh, that took it down to two seconds per rep. But it was, but it's at the point where it's a little bit too difficult to do in a workout yet, right. you know, but if, if uh, like, but this was a cool thing. I knew like, I didn't go, I didn't go as hard as I could have in, uh, in the competition on CFC. Well, because there's a you strategy know? and you, again, yeah. you can't come out too fast, but yeah. I remember another but thing. We were ready too. to ramp it up if needed of and it just wasn't needed. Yeah, so. I, I actually was screaming at the end. <laughs> Green I light, of that. go <laughs> yeah. finish the workout. But the reason why I was saying that <laughs> is because I had his coach on my phone and cause his coach wasn't able to come um, this year, but it was, I was going off of what his coach said. And someone even said to me afterwards, Oh, it's so cute how you're coaching him. I was like, no, no, I was just, I was by, I was the guy Arlo. I was, yeah, I was, yeah, I was the liaison. <laughs> yeah. But um, two months ago ish, I don't remember times anymore. But uh, I remember you were videoing, and I even think I saw your toes to bar. And he was practicing a lot in our gym, our our home gym actually, just in our garage. Uh, but the way that our bar is set up, it's kind of funky. He can't do like the whole swing the into full it, kip. Yeah. exactly yeah. Yep. into it. And so he he developed this kind of hiccup. I I don't know what else to call it other than like there was an extra little oomph. I don't know exactly uh -huh. what it was. And I was like, you need to cut that out. And so I've seen him enough. I'm not a coach by any means where I'm like, okay, like where can we improve? And then it was because of COVID and everything where we were staying home. Then he was able to go back into a real gym and he cut that, he cut out that cut hiccup. That movement, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, but that so was like, you know, that's, that's, that's how I train, you know, and I make videos of those movements and then we analyze yep. and then it's like, 
because they said my total bar looked like shit. They looked like I was using way too much energy than I should have on those total bars. So yeah, they helped uh, help me clean that up. Yeah, yeah. So it's again, like you said, basics. And I think like we've talked about. Uh, or at least personally, like that's why special forces dudes are so good at what they do too, is because they practice the basics over and over and yep. over and over till yep. they're literally just like blue in the face. Yep. Glass houses, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, you, so you used to do that stuff all the time too, is just right. like lay that shit out and walk through the stupid fucking make believe house. Yep. Again, 50 fucking times. Yeah. Golly. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's good. I mean, s- how many things are going to show up in that, those different scenarios? Every time you do it, you get, you experience yeah. different things, but that's what makes you different yeah. or any elite athlete different is because you can, you're so good at what you do now. Now you can start nitpicking and make the small things instead of doing all of the big, like, how do I learn how to do this? Yeah. So I'll tell you, um, you know, you were shouting at me to finish and and I, and I told, I, I shouldn't have said this is like one of my big regrets from the competition. I, I yelled at you and I was just like, I can't just call it like, just, I was like, I can't, I should have said nothing. I was just, you know, like, I, cause I could have, you, you know, you I, absolutely was just, could I was just, I was just like, yeah. I can't, but like my hands were tore. I was breathing heavy. I felt dizzy and stuff like that. And so I lost, I lost focus. This was a good opportunity for me to train for the next one. Mm-hmm. And I lost sight of where I was at in comparison with the clock i had no idea where i was anymore oh and when i watched the video i was like holy fuck i had a ton of time to finish that workout yeah and i and i just but i you know like nobody was on my tail but i um i could have used that opportunity to really try harder um but also you know it's 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 a weird thing you know so far ahead and you don't want to be And pull up, you know, when, it, when it's a hundred to nothing, do you fucking keep your starting quarterback in, you know, <laughs> like things like that? Well, you, know? you were the only, you right. were the whole team. Yeah. <laughs> so but you know what I mean? Or like I, I it, get those, it. those thoughts go through my head and I, and so I should just drown that out. But I you think know. you, you could have finished it and you, you, yeah. I don't think that it's rude by any means to finish could've the workout. Myself. That's what, yeah, the, I wish I would have stayed a little came bit there to do. more composed and, yeah. um, uh, do you, are you regretting it or it's not that no, well, no, I, I learned from it now yeah, so okay, like cool. to, now to be more connected to the clock the entire time, pay attention to me and my goals. Yep. And, but like my goals changed like our initially, you know, when I did that run through in early July, I finished the workout way under the time cap, but then I got COVID and then our goal, our goal for the workout was to beat Marcus by one rep, right? To win by one rep. I did that. Yep. You know, but then I, but uh, then I, I, I really did feel good after how fast I moved on those first burpee box jump overs. I was mm-hmm. like, dude, we're good. And I felt great the whole time, you know, um, little, little, I mean, you're going to breathe, but like, I was just, I was in really good shape, yep. you know, felt great. I wish I would have, uh, um, just went for it. I think, you know, yeah. just, you know, instead of, you know, I said out there, I said the words I can't. And I was like, you should not say that. I didn't hear him, so yeah, you're you good. can uh, <laughs> on the video. You can see when I can see where I said it. Uh, to you you well, can't. You, you can't hear me, you but I know yourself. I said it. I was right. just like, I can't. You know, because yeah. I was like, that was the wrong words. I could have. I just, um, I was feeling tired. I was definitely working, and I lost my edge. I lost my focus. You know. Yep. But it was also. These are just so. These are the nitpicky things we mm-hmm. take to next time. We fucking did exactly. good enough. You know, I like how we talked about earlier too, though, like what you can and cannot control. So, like me personally, I'm just like if something's not in my control, I just freak out about it. I'm an absolute control freak. I'm learning, I think, to roll with the punches. I think, but I think that is a thing in life too, to talk about like, okay, it was too hot. It was way too hot in there. And humid. We can't control how hot it was. We can't control the elevation. We can't control that. They didn't tape your bar. Maybe it was an accident, whatever, but like rolling with the punches in whatever situation you're in, you're presented with three, two, one, go. What are you going to do? Are you going to walk out and leave because it's not how you wanted it to be? Yeah. So actually like, so my, uh, the big thing, like the, the, the one thing we couldn't control, like the, you know, um, the the enemy always has a say. Enemy always has the a enemy vote. Always has a vote. Always. Yeah. So it's like we didn't know, and you know, Marcus really um, t- 
took his training seriously mm-hmm. and his promotion of it seriously, we were expecting him to be. It's like psyops, really, you know. Really we're like, good. how is he you know? training? Is he right. hiding? So that's training? what that's what, is that's what I was. That's that's what I was afraid of. My biggest fear was, how am I going to react when he's three or four reps ahead of me? Because that's yeah. I don't know. I'm not used to that. I'm not. Right. And that's when. You know, and like, and this all seems so silly because these aren't life or death situations or something like that, but this is our chosen, this is competition, you know? So it's like, it's like, like if you're in a fight, if you're, if it's like, okay, he connects and you're fucking dizzy as shit, how are you going to fucking, how are you going to react? Right. You're not out, but how are you going to react? Are you going to like, you know, uh, come out aggressive or are you going to sink and feel defeated? And so I was just really, um, you know, I was, so like my goal was, my goal, if 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 I was going to lose, my goal was to maintain my aggression and positive self-talk the whole time. Never, always keep trying harder. Like, try hard, try hard, try hard. Don't give up. Don't even, like, say anything bad about yourself. Because if, so, in the event that he beats me, he definitely fucking earned that. Right. right. <laughs> you know? yeah. right. You and there's, yeah. and there's no, you cannot deny yeah, someone's and because, work. and it was, and it was nice because I know how seriously I took this training cycle. I was like, re- like, are there things I can do better next time? Yeah. But for where I'm at right now, I did the best. I did everything I possibly could. I didn't take a shortcut. Nope. I didn't, or I didn't consciously take a shortcut. I didn't like everything. So if, if, if I was going to lose that, that motherfucker earned that shit, yep. you know, and that's impressive as fuck. Really, right. you know, I was like, wow, wow. I can't believe you holy won. Shit. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, like, cause see, I know cause what I, I put in busted my yeah. ass and, yep. I'm, and yeah. I'm no, I'm no slouch. Right. You know? So, yeah. So um, that's, that's a question I have is I think in powerlifting, we've talked before about you using visualization. Did you do that this time? Yeah. That's all? what was fucking scaring me. Okay. <laughs> you know, cause like I, I heard myself. So, so I was like conclusion or like answer to all of that. So it was like, so in my head I was running through, like I'm trying to do burpee box jump overs and I'm breathing heavy and he's ahead of me, but I have to go faster. And so in my head, you know, I played it and I was like giving up mentally. And I was like, you can't do that. And so I was like, get angry, get fucking angry. If you're behind attack, don't fucking sit back and slouch and get all boohooey. Attack. Like it like you're not gonna fucking die. Right. It's just gonna hurt. Attack. And so that was I mean you could you could die. Well but yeah. I mean <laughs> small chance. That ain't gonna be small my problem, chance. you know. <laughs> That's all your <laughs> yeah. problem now. Mark sounds like a lot of sounds Google like a lot of paperwork for you, death. not me. You know? Someone yeah. clean this up. Uh, yeah. yeah, but that was uh, that was I think that was what I was most afraid of. If if, if I was gonna be faced with a real challenge there like that. Yeah. Um, I was, I didn't, it's yet to be seen how I'll react. Every time, you know, I always think of Matt Fraser, like always, because he always has an eye on his opponents and how he does that while also keeping his rep scheme and strategy is something that's, it's, it's that's amazing. just comes to with me. experience. That's it's like it it's like you know. Um, but he's so f- comfortable with the process. We've seen him firsthand. You know, be behind, and he's okay with that. And he's calm. He yeah. stays calm, and he still goes with his yeah. plan, and he still wins. You watch every uh, time. You ever watch motorcycle racing? Valentino yeah, Rossi is a motorcycle guy. He's the same way. Like sometimes for the first few laps, he's like eighth place yeah and then he'll get down to like the lat like there's five laps to go and he just goes and he so that was so that it. was yeah. like our plan for this was like you know take that round of the first d balls in the round of nine really easy because like and just or you know and, and just you know it's like keep pace mm-hmm. but um you know it was it was step on the gas in round seven and then my instructions from my coach were to black out in the round of five and that meant you know Three second burpee box jump overs, five and five without coming off the bar on the yep. toe to bar muscle ups, and then cycling the five barbell cleans, not doing singles, but cycling them, and then just going ham on that uh, ball. Yeah, that's another thing I'm not comfortable with at all is like not feeling 
uh, not feeling uncomfortable during workouts. Is that a thing? Like he's totally okay, okay with being dizzy and like seeing lights. <laughs> yeah. And like as soon as I start seeing things that I know are not there, I'm like, okay, the, I'm done. That workout <laughs> we did that Friday that we recorded, my by, my back hurt so bad, and I try, My goal was to do that workout in ten minutes. Yep. And remember, I finished that last sandbag over shoulder at ten minutes. Yeah. There was there was thirty reps of the hundred pound sandbag over my shoulder in that workout, and that was so that was. I was so, I was in so much pain. I couldn't breathe. Like I was in so much pain. It was and no I, breaks and between. I, and I said, I said, uh, and I was just like, I attacked it. And I was like, yep. go hard. And I had the clock. I had 20, 24 seconds to do those last six sandbags over shoulder. And I was like, I can't, this is the end of the workout. That's my starting pace. That's my fresh pace. I was like, I can't do it. I was like, Derek, you can't say this is your last workout for this training cycle. Right. You can't say you can't do it. You have to fucking go there and try harder than you normally do, you know? And I fucking attacked that shit and I was in pain and it sort of like motivated me. Like fucking bring, like give me, like bring, give me more. It was like this fuck, you know, is. So that's interesting because you're super tied into the clock right then. Yeah. And then the, you yelling at him and you saying, I can't, you just said that you weren't tied into the clock just then. Yeah, but I got, I got, um. I got so far ahead at that point. Right. I think I was on my round of seven cleans and he was still in the round of nine. So it was, yeah, but I had a lot of time to finish that workout. And I really, um, I mean, I, it's good to know that I can, it's good to know that I can do that. I did, I did really well. And then I really wasn't, uh, very gassed at the end, you know, like I was breathing for sure, but I had plenty of juice left, you know? So yep. if like for the next one, you know, they can't judge where I'm at based on that performance. You know, I did enough to win on Saturday and, uh, there's more there, uh, for next time. And there will be another, uh, uh, like a title of defense, you know, but I'll tell you, I'll, you want to hear what, uh, coach and I have been talking about. Yeah. I was like, I was like, you know what? <laughs> Stacy's got a look on her face like I don't know. I was like, I'm having one belt is cool, here. and I and I text my coach. I was like, you know, it'd be really cool. And I sent a picture of him. I sent him a picture of Conor McGregor holding two belts. Two belts. You do have two belts. Mm -mm. I mean, yeah, you I do. I mean, but no, but I, I only, I, I current, have, I, yeah, but they're the same division. Yeah. You what so would I, the other division be? I inquired as to Bologna? what the weight divisions were. Oh, like can you go up against able-bodied? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah see if i can go beat any of these two-legged guys oh okay well that'd be cool yeah that'd be that'd be the like you yeah. know and not to um i don't want to say something like don't like i don't want this to come out the wrong way speak your marcus, feelings man marcus, i will marcus is a true number two or number three yeah he really is and and that's like i'm i'm very far ahead of the pack in the above knee world I just, I just am, you know, like, and I, and I screwed up on the post interview. Um, the guy in Australia, his name is Martin. He's really good. He does overhead squats with no box, with like 65 pounds or something like, like not, not Still, an amazing like weight, the, but yeah. like it's, it's legit. Yeah. So he's an above knee amputee as do you well. Do those? No, fuck no, dude. I don't, I don't do overhead squat. I can do overhead squats, but it's, I've, I've dropped a barbell on my leg enough oh, times yeah. Yeah. to like, I don't. Even no for name. I don't for like him with two like, legs. It's a circus trick. As I'm saying, you know? like yeah. it's like uh, it was hurt my shoulders. Well, when you bow, weight overhead. Yeah, when when so you guys bow out, you have a place to bow out. Right. To our knees. I don't have a bow out place. Yeah. And that mother. So like, if I mess up a rep so many times, like I fall on the box, and when you fall, you come on the box. Your you know your leg yep. that that barbell is gonna hit. It hits your shin. Yep. And I did that like six times in a year. <laughs> and I was like, like, hey, man, I'm done doing overhead squats overhead, unless I have I bail to. Out in <laughs> yeah. front of the bar. So the bar mm -hmm. goes backwards. Yeah. And I can't do that because my box is there, you know, just. Well, smashing. I'm saying without a box, you could, but it overextends mm -hmm. your shoulders and your It'll shoulders smash. do not go I've, back. <laughs> I have bailed out behind me before and yeah. bent a barbell. So yeah, that, that's, that's what, what happens. Like your shoulders, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So is he, no. is he going to be the next guy to come? I don't know. Like what I want to happen is, is, is I don't want to, I don't want to just do, um, I don't want the only above knee matches to be me. 
Right. I want to watch some of these guys do. Yeah, it I out. think you deserve to yeah. to sit back you know, one and be and like, yeah, okay, because like you know what you know they they this. have the benefit of seeing me compete now. Right. You know, it's easy to show up to the CrossFit box, and or like you know, if somebody comes into the the box at five thirty and puts up a good score, it's easier to beat that score knowing that score than it is to come oh, yeah. and do it do it yourself. Right. You know. So um, and I you know so it, and it and also and also and I. You know, I don't, I don't like to be mean, but what I, in that post interview, when AJ asked me if I wanted to call people out, oh, yeah. you know, like what I said, I was like, you know, it's not that, so I said, there's, there's some people I would call cause I don't like them. It's not that I don't like them. I just, I don't like how they interact with me in, okay. in, in, in a, in yeah. a, in a sense, you know, but um, do, don't you think that's the kind of like the trash? Uh, talk. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Cause like Conor McGregor right. does yeah. so much. All right. Trash okay. Talk. Yeah. But like, so that, that's the thing, but that's, so, um, what I'm talking about here is like, I, I'm friends with every, every above knee amputee in like functional fitness or fitness. I'm friends with them, you know, and we can like, we're cool. And to be honest, like I help these guys with certain movements and tricks I've learned. I've been in, I've been in an above knee amputee for quite a while longer than most people, or certainly in CrossFit competing for, for, for longer. And, um, I enjoy that behind the scenes. We talk shop and we pump each other up and things like that. But when it comes to the con, like, look, okay, it's all well and good. If you want to be a man and you want to say like, you're, you're, you're coming after me. All right. Now you turn that switch on in my head that says you're coming to take what I have. You're coming to take what I want. Mm -hmm. Just know now we're at uh, like now, kind of, now like you, yeah. you like me you, you we can be cool you know that reminds me of the steep adc match you know mma yeah, like, so it hey, was like cool, they were og if, bros and they were like it's like they respect each other and the the other person's yeah. game you know it's yeah. like at the end they're friends so right they so in that it. respect yep. it's like yeah so it's like you know so i it's like hey if you want to if, if if this is the conversation you want to have about it all right i'm gonna fuck you up yeah. I'm gonna I'll fucking. Come into I'm your gonna arena ruin. If you want I'm gonna go make there, you yeah. feel like I'm. I'm not like you don't. You have to understand. I'm not just here to. I'm here to like. I'm not. I'm not here to win. I'm here to dominate. So can we talk about that a little bit about your competition this weekend and how much uh, interaction you had with Marcus oh, throughout the up. weekend? I thought it was cool. Yeah, I thought it was so, cool too. So I mean, so Marcus and Derek are really good friends, actually. Yep. <laughs> um, so Derek had his vehicle up there because we drove there. It's close to us. Marcus flew in from Florida. He didn't have his vehicle there because he flew in. So Derek was taking Marcus to the gym in the morning. They were training, practicing, things like that. And then he took him to the grocery store because Derek was going to the grocery store anyway. You right. know, like get some stuff in pre pre comp and like no one had to do any of that stuff and marcus didn't ask for it i don't think but even if he would have then derek would have sh surely said yes you know like th these dudes are cool with each other yeah. and that's not necessarily something you'll find with like a lot of different uh competitors like they were training against each other that night yeah i think but. also with like the the type of competition this is where it is one-on-one -on -one, head to yes. head like you know so yeah. in my i i um uh, yeah, that was a weird, I, I debated on help because everything that I did and like, you know, ev like all the planning, everything Didn't we did, that? <laughs> you know, well, like, no, all the planning we did was to, to make the pre competition routine, you know, oh, like right. I brought my, I put, I planned my travel. We had it like I planned my travel. I knew we planned our, where, where I was going to stay. I picked, you know, I picked my own travel. We picked our own. We got an Airbnb yeah. with a kitchen. I brought my own food and things like that. And he traveled a lot further. Yes. But if that was me, I would have, I would have, I would have come out on Tuesday or Wednesday. I would have, you know, rented got a, a car, car, got yep. a, got a place with a kitchen, things like that. And like, you know, um, and so, but you can make an argument like, you know, he had to work, maybe they don't have the money or things like that. I was like, all right, what you need, if you want to be at this level, this is what you have to do everything, you know? But so, but so I had, um, so I was like, I don't want to give that up. Like this is an, oh, this it. is, this yeah. is an advantage well, I have I, over him right now. He's yeah. struggling to find I his way around yep. and I have this yeah. advantage right now. Right, I was right. like, Hey, okay. But there's different, like. But what's the right thing to do? Yes. What's the right thing to do? What's and the I was like, I did, between you know, me and and I certainly, have, I could have done more. I mean, yeah. you know, <laughs> I didn't do more. Okay. Like I would, have, but I, you know, I tried to do the right thing. You know, yeah. um, he, I, he didn't, um, he had his interview Saturday morning 
And I, uh, I was like, Hey man, I'm going to the gym. And he was like, what time are you going? I was like, do you want to go to the gym? I was like, I will pick you up. And I, and I, and I hung around, I would have gone to the gym a lot earlier. I, I sat around for like an hour so he could do his interview. And then I picked him up and, and we did the work and we, sh- we shot the shit, you know? And there was a definite, like, it wasn't like a, there was a tension, but not like an aggressive, I don't like yeah. you tension, you know? Right. He was throwing in some shots about, you know, where he was going to put that banner in his garage when he beats <laughs> me. <laughs> stuff like that. Well, I was you with know? you guys <laughs> right before the comp. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. we drove together to the yeah. gym right before everything. And it was yeah. just like, hey, what's up? But, I mean, it was still, yeah, it was like, hey, we're about to go head to head. But it was a friendly, like, head to head. And it was, it was just good. Yep. You know, just, it was cool. just like a, a healthy, yep. respectful yeah, and relationship. Actually, so we went for the athlete briefing and everybody stayed there. The athlete briefing started at 3.30 and everybody stayed there. And I fucking hate staying there. I hate talking to people. At least, so I was like, for the first time, I was like, I'm going back. And Mark was like, you're going back? I was like, you want to go back? And then I, f- I've le- I legit picked him up to come Maybe come and beat me. Like <laughs> right. I, I, I fucking went and at six o'clock. I went and picked up the guy who was there. He was he was going to the same place I was going, and he was going there to beat me. Yeah, yep. like this is fucking. But it's the right thing to do. Yep. And he's a good he's a good he's dude, a, and yeah. he's a fucking yeah. combat wounded vet. Same yeah. fucking yep. thing, you know. And I, and I actually told him. Good dude, I told him. I was like, I was like, I was like, Marcus, I would like, I fucking hate competing against you because I can't hate you. Right. Like I, I wanna, <laughs> yeah. I wanna experience it'd be, that. It'd be I more convenient if you were a piece of shit. So and I, hate nice to hate I was like, but you're like, <laughs> like, he's my fucking brother. Like in this, you know, yep. like we're, you know, yep. you do that shit. If, if that's if that's what you did with your life, like we're fucking brothers. And it's like, hey, but you know, but, but that said, when you know, he was he was game face. When uh, oh, sure. he did his walkout, and when yeah. I walked out, I didn't fucking look at him. Yeah, yeah, I you saw know? him. I saw him like <laughs> yeah. give you a, uh, like fist pound and be like all right see you on the other side and i was that like was, yeah, that all right yeah okay Game time. Yeah. 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 yeah 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 but no that was a, that was important and i i yeah. was talking to the coach about that i was in and he i think he understood but he asked me why i'm doing it and i told him i was like hey man it's just the right thing to do you know yeah and he's yeah. like yep I get that 100%, you know. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it was the right thing to do. Good sportsmanship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I have another maybe final question. Um, I think a bunch of podcasts ago, we talked about how do you start in fitness and your big things are goals. So, start, you know, with whatever. But you did also mention pick a date or pick a competition. So, are you still standing by that, that people should still take this seriously and, like, compete? And what do you what do you say to that i guess um i uh well overall like i think competing yeah it's good it's good for your character building it'll it'll like give you a reason to um work harder and things like that but you learn about yourself in competition like you really like i like august was really cool for me you like you guys know that i like took a step backwards and i did a lot of thinking and stuff like that and i just yeah like competition it, you don't know who you are until or like in, in in a in a well i maybe i think that's true like you don't know what you're made of until you're faced with something challenging like I mean, com- you're com- tested. Com- competition i think means it brings challenge. up what we just talked about is yeah. there are things you can't control so when i'm doing normal training I can pretty much control everything and I can dip out of whatever I want to. see what you're made to. of and learn and get better. That's but how when you I really did, get better. When I did that competition with you at Sin City CrossFit, there was a lot I could not control and I did learn about myself and <laughs> yeah. it wasn't pretty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I am thankful that I did that competition. I think it's going to be a few more years before yeah. I do another here's, one. Here's, here's, a, here's, a, here's a beef I have that I would only share on Savage Saturdays. People who run like fitness social media accounts that don't fucking compete need to, I just, in my opinion, like they should shut the fuck up. If you haven't competed or don't compete, it's just a, it's like, uh, you you know, it's, uh, it, 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 it bothers me. It bothers me because that's the hard part of all this working out and looking relatively okay. So fucking easy. Yeah. It's so fucking easy. All you, all you have to do is like the level one shit. You know, that's it. It's like level one shit, but you look like you're, 
more advanced or something like that. It's so easy to do. I agree. If you really want to, and so if, if that's your, you know, if that's that's all you talk about, if you're talking about, if you're telling people like overcome adversity, rise to the challenge, mindset, get shit. comfortable in the uncomfortable, but you don't <laughs> even know what fucking uncomfortable feels like. Your fucking version of uncomfortable is eating a rice cake instead of a fucking cherry fucking Starving pie. Yourself, you know, yeah. like that's not a real thing. Like compete, compete or shut the fuck up. And that's, that's only to the people who preach it all day, every day, you know, stop with the fucking cliche Instagram posts and like compete or shut the fuck up. That's just like that. It bothers me. I'd be like, if you're about the life, be about the life, go out there and compete. Go so you fucking stand by, you know, like, Hey, train for something, train for something. Yeah, absolutely. Pick a competition. Even yeah. if you're not like, you the don't have best. to be like me and try to like, yeah. fucking like, but part like, that's what I'm saying. Trying. I, I yeah. was, I can, you're going to get the bug. Yeah. You're going to get the bug. Yep. If, you, if you start yeah. competing, start challenging, you're going to get the bug. Cause I competed that bug, with you. Yeah. I'm not like, I'm not even an RX athlete, but I'm proud that I did compete and I can say I did this, you know, I, I competed, I did this and it, it, Maybe I will compete again. I you don't know. You did really well. And you're, yeah, you have like a Well, good our goal was don't be last. And we weren't last. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we beat our goal. That's not <laughs> mission so. accomplished. That's yeah. not, hey, that's not easy to do. No, when you it's, got a fucking not. cripple on your team. Yep. Versus, right, because yeah. we just, we did a scaled, it was Derek and I partnered. And it was super fun. And it, I guess in that aspect too, like maybe do something fun like that. Like, yeah. so yeah. we were partners. We did a well, there was a it's one of the workouts started with a partner run and you had to like fucking put a oh yeah a band around each other's waist okay yeah. so i'm out there crutching <laughs> it was at a mile or half a mile room. <laughs> i think it was like a half mile eight. to start and then a half mile at the end wasn't it no, it was like a 0.8 mile i think oh yeah it was something it was funky yeah. yeah i'm out there crutching this run you know we still didn't come in last Tied to Stacy, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I am mm -hmm. by no means yeah. like super fit, and I'm yeah. just like, oh god. No, if if you ever wanted to turn it on, you you could be really like you have a good well, you have good yeah. natural mobility, like natural. You have good, you got good hips, Stacy. Yeah, we hear about good hips right. all the time. My got flexibility, that, got the yes, right, I, got the right height it. to thickness ratio. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> but uh, for for this for those, this yeah, sport, those Midwest calves, man, they can do fucking work. They do. Farmer, I'm a farmer. <laughs> yeah no i i i super agree with that i'm not a competitor by any means but i definitely think like just choose no, something I think or even like a 5k race no. we actually just totally. signed up for I the 5k in september, september 11th you know yeah. what you just said you said you're not a competitor i think that's i think that i think everybody is a competitor at least with themselves i think people get um sometimes this anxiety we feel inside is this like deep desire to challenge ourselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. And that's what it is. But we constantly let fear take that over. Oh, I'm super and scared. Yeah. yeah. So that's, <laughs> and so that, that just, that's, that's the, that's the anxiety. Sometimes that voice, some, you know, when you, when you're afraid to do something, that's because you have like such a deep desire to challenge yourself and it's fucking terrifying. And so if, and if, so if we can share something with the listeners, how I did, on Saturday, like what I was able to accomplish, if if you guys could have heard what was going on in my head or seen the look on my face, I mean, fucking, I was shaking. Yep. I was terrified. Yep. Yeah. I was so scared. I didn't think I could do it. And I had done all this preparation physically and mentally, and it didn't matter. I still faced that. Yep. You know, and that's, that's okay. Like that. that normal. Yeah. yeah. That, that's just going to happen, I guess, you know, and I was surprised by it. And I was like, is this, is this, is this it? Is this the end? And I was just like, but I, you know, I did, did some meditations or like last week and it was, you know, it was a lot about, Hey, whatever comes in your head, let it fucking run. Yeah. Like let it run its course. Don't react to it. Don't get yeah. emotional about it. Let it run its course. And then, you know, come back to your, um, you know, like your, your focus point in the meditation, you know, for me, yeah. it's sounds so. Um, yeah, it was like, despite, despite that fear, despite that, oh man, I was like in my, in my head, I was like, I felt so empty. Like my fucking, you know, my throat was in my stomach type. Okay. Feeling. And I'll I, compete again. Nice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Stacy no, White okay. is re-entering. You know what? Like you do really well when you have. No, what I'm, I know what I'm afraid yeah. of. I'm afraid of the things I can't control. I've said it like a thousand times just on this podcast alone is like when the bike isn't starting mm -hmm. or yeah. when I walk up to the bar and there's no tape so on the we bar, almost that shit it, yeah. throws me off. And then I'm like, I'm done, but I am getting more comfortable with controlling what I can 
and I have to roll with the punches and so I have to get comfortable with so that. So you fix that by putting yourself in that situation yes, more you're often. Right. You're right. And then that's how you get yeah. used to you're, you are developing the, the skills. Yeah, so exactly. that competition, that was our last event. We in like we made it to the last event, but you kind of threw in the towel. Oh, with, I was done. Yeah. So it was a, so I w- I, it was a conga line thing. So yeah. it's like, it was like a skier, then some sit-ups. It was then the a, rope then pulls. An assault. Oh yeah, that rope pull thing. Yeah. Ugh, fuck it w- that. It was yeah. rope pulls, sit-ups. And the, bike, the bike and then sled push. Yes. And then so Stacy, we could have finished in the time cap. Yeah. But Stacy threw in the towel on I the did. sled push. And it's embarrassing she was talking but, yeah. about it. But, it but. Like, but like, but I said, I can't. And hey. I'm, and I'm here the one that's. Oh no, no. Right. I, yeah. I fully admit that yeah. I did that. And like. It's embarrassing mm. looking back. Like, why did you do that? Like, but, right? Okay, but the important it happened because on the bike, Stacy just fucking eyes closed, starts cranking off the bike. Yeah. Some and the bike wasn't on, and oh, she and thought the it, judge she, didn't well, say anything. But she, but it, 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 it's like, but it's probably not the judge's responsibility. No, it's not. Right. And Derek told me that going into it, he was like, yep. "You are responsible for everything that happens," yep. and it's true. He was like, "Pay attention. This is it. Like." pay attention so sh- and so i closed my eyes i started cranking and then i looked i opened my eyes and it wasn't counting my calories yeah. and i was like oh my god and i was like i'm done yeah. and i just quit i quit on me i quit on my teammate we like that finished sucked. that workout too yep. but yeah. it got yeah but she she like blamed the judge in that moment so yeah so yeah. i was like all these reps all these calories right. i just did they didn't count but that's my fault i need to be paying attention right. to that stuff it yeah, also but, but happened like, and, and like, it's over it did. Yeah. Right. so now and you it was do your it. first crossfit competition exactly. and like those are the kinks you got to work out that's, it. Yeah, like, guess that's what? why it you have happened. to start Go. competing yep because yeah. you're gonna make you're gonna fuck up so bad yep. probably so like your first three to five 100 percent. i am checking every machine i touch like i will waste 10 seconds to make sure like she's like she's like before i even start i'm gonna check the fucking battery yeah. Right. She like shows Excuse up with her me. battery tester and shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> who's my judge? Yep. Yeah. All right. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, it's a thing. I've seen it happen in the CrossFit games too. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Something happens and it's out of your control. Yep. You roll with it. So that's I think part that's, of competition. Isn't it, called, isn't it called exposure therapy? Where yes. They, yeah. So I'm, it's, like I'm terrified of flying, yeah. but I don't avoid flying because right. I have to, I have to do it. You have it. to beat it. Yes. I used to enjoy flying. <laughs> yeah. No, he I still like flying alone. Yeah. So <laughs> but when you're sitting, me, when you're sitting oh, next to somebody yeah. who's having a panic attack, Every they're like, "Dude, I, I'm, I sleep on planes. Yeah, my body just knows. Yeah, and then as soon as I get the tappy tap, I'm like, <laughs> she wakes me up. I'm like, God damn, I don't want to be awake on this flight. You know, right? Is it, yeah. It was I'm like, trying to fast forward these two hours. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. And I guess we're going to have to have a conversation about what you're going to do and when or something well, like that. Well, it was the, s- the Sin City Massacre or whatever it was. Oh, uh, we're doing that? No, I'm saying that's what we competed in. Oh, and I'm yeah. just saying there's enough time for me to sort of get ready for the next one. Sure. Oh, yeah. That'd be we'll cool. See. It's a val- the Valentine's Day Massacre. Valentine's oh, right Day on. Massacre. It's a couple's thing. It yeah. Uh, yeah. That might but be. we're also, like I said, doing a 5K. I actually accidentally quote unquote signed us up for a <laughs> September 11th 5k right on it's, fucking it's virtual I like, was looking I was looking for some and then COVID happened and then yeah. they all went virtual and I, I was like yeah. ah, that's not what I'm looking for because I can go run by myself and look at times like I want the crowd and I want the people and I want the showing up I don't up want and the crowd I don't want the I like people it. Yeah. I get train energy in off my of gym, that my garage yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah all right, well, cool. Well, I think that'll uh, wrap up our show for today, huh? Yeah, and, um, compete. Yeah, yeah, compete. Get out compete. there, compete. Challenge yourself. Make yourself yep. uncomfortable. Face that, face, face that fear, face that voice, because, you know, I actually, in my post interview yesterday, um, they asked if I had any advice, and I one of the things I said that I've never said before that I liked, it was like, I was like, just, just know that your hero gets scared. Like, your hero gets scared, because a lot of, like, in fitness, a lot of people, you know, like, it's it's that fear that keeps them out of the gym, it, you know, and it's just like, Hey, yeah, that's true. You're like the person that you think has all their shit together and is the most badass motherfucker, man, or woman shit in their know, pants right now is fucking nervous pooping yep. for they 72 hours too, before yeah. they go and do something that scares them for sure. You know? So it's just yep. fucking, it's just being human, man. It's all about how you fucking handle it. Be alive. Handle being human. All right. Yep. We love you guys. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll catch you next week. Bye. Cheers. Bye.